Hi, ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Dr. Donna. Last week, I read the book Major, and it's taken me an additional day to do this video because I didn't want to do this video. Why? Because I felt like Marshall Taylor. And as I indicated at the beginning of 52, that it is the year of you and for me too. And I was going to be totally transparent and totally honest. And that's why I have this tissue in my hand because I don't know where this is going to go. Marshall Taylor, he just wanted to ride a bike. He just wanted to be the fastest man in America. And nobody wanted him to do that, especially not Mr. McFarland. And they did everything to him. And he was a Christian. He couldn't race on Sunday because it was the Sabbath. So he never even had the shot at the world championship until later on. They pushed him off his bike. They made him go to another country to become a champion. And even when he was in other countries, they called him Le Negre. Where is the black one? They wanted to see this black man speeding around a track on a bike under the most austerest conditions. And he did it anyway until he just, they, his last race, it was so unfair. And they just knocked him down and bled his, split his head open. He was in the hospital and they were still talking trash. The promoter said, well, you know, he got race. And his wife is pregnant, seven months pregnant. And he couldn't decide. And then finally, McFarland, the guy that had just been taunting him for decades, for a decade, just said, well, if he does it, then he can't be the champion. And I'm the champion by default. So he got out of his hospital bed and took an all night train ride to run and to race. I said run because I used to run track to race against him with open, bleeding wounds to become the champion, only to come back to America for the white Americans to not necessarily be a fan and finally have the black Americans embrace him. And for years, all that money that he saved, he ended up dying broke because of bad investments. Spent 15 years in an unmarred grave until people came along and finally recognized his greatness. That's fucked up. It is. Why am I angry? You know, I never talk about race. And I never talk about being a black, divorced woman, single parent from the hood in Detroit, because none of that shit matters. At the end of the day, if I want to be successful in this country, I got to do more, period. I accepted that when I was 21 years old. You know what the real hard part about all of this is? I'm light skinned. I passed the blue vein test. So I have been discriminated against on both sides. Some people told me I'm too black. Some people told me I'm not black enough. Some people said you can't do this because you're a girl. You stupid. You dumb. I mean, every step of the way of my life, I felt like Marshall Taylor. I got jobs at the same time as other white male counterparts did more and they got promoted. I was a, sec a first lieutenant in the military and another white male first lieutenant was getting out. He got the top block because he needed a good rating for his corporate job. And I got a two block. Because he was leaving. He was leaving. I was the one staying. But you know what? I never have told anybody none of these stories because it doesn't matter. If I had a focus on who was pushing Dr. Donna down, I wouldn't even be standing here today. I had to catch a city bus one way, 59 minutes in all kind of weather. I graduated number 345 out of 602 in my high school class. I wasn't the best. But I'm standing here the best today. I'm the best parent that I can be, having received not a motherfucking dime of child support. But my child ain't missed a beat. I am divorced, and so is 50% of the world. So I don't wear that badge either. I couldn't read, and now I've written books, and I have read 208 books. I was in the military at Fort McClellan with the Klan 20 miles down the road. I used to have to drive to school in my uniform, fearing that they might see me and do something to me. And I didn't let that stop me from getting a master's degree. So all you people out there, and I said you people, don't put a comment saying I said you people. I am from the hood. Grew up around alcoholics and druggies and dope dealers and everything else. And anything that could happen to a woman or a black person in America has happened to me. But guess what? I'm standing strong. My name is Dr. Donna Louise Thomas Rogers, president of Brentworth Industries. And I didn't let nothing stop me and neither did Marshall Major Taylor. And for all you wusses and wimps out there crying because it ain't fair, it ain't fair. So what? Suck that shit up and get up and go do great things. 
Don't put no comments about me cursing because I have only cursed in one other video. Don't make it seem like I'm some irrational black woman that's mad at America because I done got treated bad by blacks, Asians, and everybody else. And I've got treated great by those same races and ethnicities. This is about if you want to be the best, you don't let nothing and nobody stop you. Quit complaining. Quit talking about all this losing mindset. Get off your ass and go be somebody. Quit putting stuff on social media, sitting on your couch, doing absolutely nothing. You will never hear me rant like this on another video. But I had to go deep within and see why this book of all the books I ever read in my whole life got me on 50 when I'm supposed to be on six. Not supposed to be, but normally I'm on six. But it has happened to me. And I ain't about to wear it like no badge. And again, I'm not talking about it unless it got some validity. I got pulled over by the cops. But you know what? I was also a cop. I got a master's degree in criminal justice. I know the system. I know what you have to do and what you can't. I done been standing somewhere in full, full length fur coats and diamond rings and got discriminated against by a 16 year old working behind the counter. So what? Who cares? At the end of the day, I, my ancestors died so I could stand here and put this video out. I got a daughter and generations coming behind me. And that's what I get up to do every day. That's why I keep going. That's why I'm Dr. Donna. Start living for your legacy and stop talking about all this losing mindset crap. I'm looking for 100,000 leaders. Leaders, not followers. I don't need no followers. All this losing mindset, it don't matter. None of this matters. I'm not supposed to be standing here right now if I paid attention to what my surroundings said. I couldn't read. Couldn't read. We were poor. We had three forks at one time in my life. I didn't have but five outfits and had to wait to Christmas and birthdays and all that stuff. I know what that feels like. So what? Get off your butt and go be somebody. That's what made me so mad about this book. This man did all of this work and got in an unmarked grave. No. Now people know who he is, but who are you? You living and you complaining because of what somebody said. They said it to me. I got called a black bitch by my own employee who almost tried to break my nose with a warehouse door. So what? I'm still standing here. I got a billion stories. They could do a whole documentary of all the bad crap that happened to Dr. Donna and it would have to be a mini series. But I'm standing here today and y'all know all my videos is positive. Y'all know everything I say. I say lose the losers. That's why, because losing ain't going to do nothing for you. Marshall Taylor lost the losers. And now people know even more about this person. Dr. Donna, don't let all that I went through be in vain because you're worried about the next man. Get your butt up. I don't care what your position is. I don't care if you got $3 or $3 billion. You leave a legacy. Don't worry about discrimination and police brutality. All of that can be rectified with the right leaders in the right positions doing the right thing. And that's what I'm about. So again, you ain't never going to see me do a video like this ever again. I'm not saying none of these old sad stories because that ain't going to change nothing. What's going to change is me waking up every day saying I am somebody. I am. My ancestors did not die in vain because I'm here to make a difference. And that's what you need to do. That's what the model for this book for 52 is. If it's possible for me, then it's possible for you. And that's what we're going to do in 52. I'm out.